Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio, Diane here. Today I'm going to do some Guess What Christmas cards. Um, you know, why not? Christmas is coming and we all love painting these things. So you could also use this design for um, little gifts if you wanted to frame them or something like that. Um, what we're going to do, I've got three designs here that I've been working on and uh, they're going to be square and they're going to be, it's going to be a little church, a little cottage, sort of, you could make it into a gingerbread cottage if you wanted to, and a little nativity scene. And I've just been online and looking it up to see whether or not there are pine trees and snow in Bethlehem. And um, it turns out they do have a snowy season when they could have up to 52 centimetres of snow in one year. So therefore it's okay to do a nativity scene with snow. Okay, now, okay, we have climate change and maybe it wasn't like that then, but you know, we can be allowed a little bit of um, artistic license, can't we? And they do have pine trees there as well. So that's what we're going to do. Now, um, I've got a piece of paper here, which is um, quite thick. I think it's 140 pound, but it might be thicker. And um, this is ideal for making uh, cards with. But uh, what I'm going to do, because I don't want to waste all the backs of all these cards, I don't send Christmas cards, um, I'm going to cut it into four pieces. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to cut it into two pieces and then I'll cut another one into two pieces also. Um, in order to get a kind of deckled edge all the way around, I do it with a paper knife like this. And I use the bone folder just for smoothing it down, for making sure it's a nice clean fold. And then I just do this. I, some people cut the paper with this. I'm not strong enough to do that. I need a bit of a, a, bit of a sharp edge. This is ideal. You can get these on. Amazon, they're pennies, and it's it's not sharp, you can't cut yourself with it, but it'll certainly cut the paper. And um, I don't know where this one actually came from, I think it might be from here in Brittany, but uh, a good idea, a paper knife, good idea. So now we've got two pieces like this, and I'm just going to cut the edge off and make them into squares. I don't know whether you want to watch me doing that, but um, where's my... Here's my, my rough one, which I'll use to measure with. So I'm just going to draw a line down here. And uh, we can do both of them together. And then I'll use something to cut onto, I think. Like that. And I'll grab a ruler. Some people use paper cutters for this, but it's not really necessary to go to the other side of the studio to use that. So I'll put it here with a knife and a ruler. So there we are. That's two. And uh, I've got a problem with counting, don't I? I'm not quite sure how I thought I was going to get four out of that piece of paper. So we'll do that all again. There we go, and trusty paper knife. And it's all done for now. And this is a pattern. It doesn't matter if they're not exactly, absolutely, perfectly square, does it? Um, but it's quite nice to do it. Uh, you could make, you know, obviously the whole card like this, but I was thinking. It's nice to use a thicker piece of paper for the design and then to glue it onto a slightly lighter weight and obviously cheaper uh, card to support your piece of art. There we are, we can all over there. So now we've got four like that. Now, 
the next thing to think about is paint. And I've been trying out some different colours here, um, different mixes, because what I want to do is I want to do a background wash. And so I'm going to prepare the washes first. We're going to do three of them. Uh, I might do four just in case one goes wrong. And I want to do them in three different shades. So I want them um, to be one slightly mauvish, one slightly greenish, and one slightly bluish. And I'm going to be using my Kuretake colours for this, these little dishes here. So let's just move everything over so you can see the paints. There we are. Um, so I'm going to mix up some a good quantity so that I've got enough. And the base colour is going to be this one here, which is called indigo. And that's number four from the right. So we will put some indigo in each of these little dishes. So indigo is going to be the base colour for all three of these backgrounds. So rather than rinsing out the brush in between each one, I'm going to do it like that. And then I'm going to put some red into one of them. This is purple, they call it purple. Um, but it is a bluish red. You want a bluish red, don't go putting something like this in with the, the indigo because you'll end up with grey. So you want a bluish red like this, this purple. And then we'll just test that, see. Yeah, that's the kind of colour I was hoping for. So that's going to be the background wash on one of them. Pop that over there. And then the next one, I'm going to use um, forest green for this one. We did watch Forest Gump the other day, actually. Saying forest green always reminded me of Forest Gump, so we watched it. On, it's a lovely film, isn't it? Um, very heartwarming, even though it's rather sad, but it's a very good message. So there we are. That's the green that we're going to be using. I might pop a little bit more indigo in there to make that a little bit bluer. I think that will be fine. So put that green one over here. And now number three, what did I say I was going to do? Refer to my uh, original, I said I was going to make it blue, didn't I? Ha, there we go. So that's indigo, <clears throat> but I don't want it as bright as that because although indigo is a dark blue, it's quite, um, I don't know, it's not quite the colour I wanted. So I want to put some of this one in, which is more of a grey, so that we can have a sort of greyish background for that one, more of a traditional starry night colour. So those are the three colours that we're going to be using for our painting. So we've got them pre-mixed now, so I'll put these paints out of sight a little bit. These were my test ones, so they can go over there. Uh, an artist, if you are an artist, if I am an artist, that can never have too much space. This is definitely true. Okay, so there's some clean water. I'm going to make a, a square on the paper, which is going to be the background for the, for the painting. <coughs> I'm not going to use a massive amount of water and I'm not bothered too much about the edges, whether they're going to be dead straight or not. You can worry about them if you want, but if you look at it sideways on, you can probably see if you've missed a bit. It's best not to miss anything. Try and get it reasonably even. And then um, we're going to use the ready mixed paint to do the background. So we'll just drop that in and enjoy the fact that it loves to it loves to spread. And just let it do its thing. And gently, don't do this business, 
just let it gently move down. If you wanted to leave snowy area at the bottom, you could just leave part of it unwet and it would go down and make a nice snow bank. But uh, on this particular one, I'm going to color the whole thing in and go back to the top and drop some more in. And just encourage it to come down the page. And these Kuretake colors work perfectly well for wet in wet washes. They're not, they're not so much like gouache that they don't make a nice even wash. And it doesn't matter if you have a little bit of variation in the color because it's not necessarily, you know, you don't need it to be even all over. But uh, there we are, so that's the purple one. We'll put that over there to dry. And then second one. Just pretend you're painting when you put the water on. Painting invisible ink. Lemon juice, that's what they used to use, wasn't it? Used to write in lemon juice on paper. And then if you knew you had a message, all you had to do was hold it over a match and the lemon juice would go brown and you'd be able to read your secret message. So that's what I'm doing. I'm painting a secret message. I mean, it's water, not lemon juice. Okay, so now this one's going to be green. So just drop it in. Let it go to the edges. This is the lazy woman's way of painting. Suits me down to the ground. And just gently ease it down the paper. This is a bit like meditation, you're just you don't want to rush it, you know, you're not in a hurry to get to the end because it really is, you know, a great way to spend some time. You could do a dozen of these, one after the other, let them all dry and come back and do your trees on top and Bob's your uncle. You've got something to sell at the local craft fair. Okay, so just come down to the bottom. I'm not really trying to do a graduated wash. I thought it would be best if we just did a nice smooth, um, a smooth color there, more or less. And number three, the blue one, more traditional color, the sky. Although we have had some funny colors lately. Whoops, don't forget to make it wet first. It looks quite nice if you if you do an, a very irregular background as well, so not to go to square like this, but just irregular. But I'm not going to do that. That would be something more like this, um, which you could do, but it kind of, it won't look so good in the photo. So we'll just stick with the one shape. I think. Okay, so now it was the one we haven't done is blue. Blue always loves to explode when it hits the paper or the water. Uh, 
And we go back up the top and put a bit more in as well. There we are. And I think we will just let that sit and dry naturally. You can use a hairdryer to dry it with if you want. Or if you're nifty and up to date with all your purchases, you could even use one of those heat gun things. But I think a hairdryer, you know, I don't know how many hair dryers we've got in our house. It'd be ridiculous to buy a heat gun. Hairdryer works fine. Actually, we have got a heat gun, but we use it for stripping paint off of fences and things. I don't think that would work. I think it might be a bit strong. We end up having a fire. There we are. I can hear one of my dogs barking in the background. She's annoying. She's going senile. There we are. Now we'll leave that one to dry too. And I will be back after lunch to carry on with the next stage. Okay, so the backgrounds are dry now and I'm just going to have a go at painting a little nativity scene. And um, what we're going to do, I'm going to try this, is I want to put some, some nice thick snow, working on the basis that that year, the whole 52 centimetres that they expect in Bethlehem fell in one night onto... Um, the stable where Jesus was. And uh, I just realized I did that slightly the wrong shape, uh, but never mind. And um, then I'm going to get another brush because I don't want to keep on washing all of the white paint off. So pick up another brush, a little bit of black. And uh, I'm just gonna put a wall to the stable there and another wall here. And then I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that I've got another brush, a small one. Have I? This one will do, I think. And I'm going to get some nice gold. And it doesn't matter if it blurs a little bit or, or whatever, but we'll just put some gold inside the stable like that. We can always sharpen up those lines a bit afterwards if we want. So just do that like that. Then I'm going to go back to the white and I'm hoping, hoping against hope, that I'm going to get a Something dashing like that. Could be better, could be worse. That will do. And then I'm going to go back to the gold. And without too much water, you'll notice that I'm actually concentrating on this. This wants to be fairly... Uh, fairly thick so that it shows up against the background. So we're just going to put a, a nice golden tree in there and then a smaller one on this side. I'm using starry colours here, but I'm just about to switch soon to the Calibri ones, the fine tech colours, because these are nearly run out. So there we are, there's another tree the other side. And then we will go into some black and I'm just gonna put uh, in a shadowy way and I'm hoping that this gold isn't quite dry yet. I'm just gonna put Mary and the manger. And Joseph there. I'm 
when that's a little bit dry, I will emphasize it a bit more, I think. And there we are, that's better. He always has a shepherd's staff, doesn't he? I don't know why. Some shadowy figures there. We'll see how that dries and see how it looks and whether or not we have to do anything to it. And then we need a star to be a fairly big star. But they're not easy to draw. Anyway, so that's that. And then we will go to the snow, which is going to be spattered, but not too much, just a little bit fine spatter. Then I'm going to go and get a bigger brush and we're going to pick up some There we go. We don't want too many of those. I will need to darken up various things because as you go along, things change. This needs to be a bit darker. And my figures in here also don't want to be quite so ghostly. So anyway, we'll set that aside to dry and come back and see what's going on when it's dry. Then the second one is going to be a uh, just a traditional snow scene, uh, I think. I'm going to take my small brush, not the smallest, but the, where has it gone? This one, I think. It's been a bit of a mess here. And on this screen, in the background, we need some trees. Very quiet here today. I feel like I ought to be doing something else. You ever get that feeling? You're doing something and you think, oh, I'll be doing something else. Happens quite a lot, really. Um, then we need, I was thinking, I don't know if this is going to work. Cottage. And another tree. And another tree. And then snow on the roof.
chimney. Then we need some light in the windows, don't we? And the door, which is open, of course. Is it what colour cottage is it going to be? It's going to have to be green, isn't it? Little bit of smoke coming out the chimney. And then perhaps and then maybe I think yeah I want to oh well I can put some white on there can't I to make them a little bit paler because I've got you know, snow. And I think, I don't know, I think something needs to be here. I think I'm going to make this tree much bigger. then I can't resist it. We've got to have snow here. Snow banks. And then We'll let that dry. Okay, so the third one that uh, that I'm going to do is going to be <clears throat> just a simple tree scene. And uh, we start off by doing the ones in the distance first in a light diluted colour. So it's the same colour, just with a little bit more water in it. And uh, we're just going to put them very simplified shapes in the background here. They will, of course, dry a little bit lighter than they look at the moment. And then we're going to go to stronger, stronger colour. And uh, let's put, let's put one in here. So we just draw a straight trunk like that. And then this is a fine brush, like I mentioned before, I think. And 
and vary the length of the branches and the and the angle and everything else and just and then so we want a big one here so we're going to start with the needles going upwards a little bit plenty of spaces between them don't make them too regular and then certain distance down the tree they start to turn a typical Christmas tree. I know there are other different kinds of firs that do different things. So let me just go right the way down to the ground. A little bit of a line underneath them to show that they're actually standing somewhere. And this one, go here. I think I'm going to draw the line at putting snow on these. In other words, I'm not going to. Just hope that uh, some of the light spaces give the indication. It's only just started to snow. There we are. And now we're going to want to pick up a little bit of white. And I think we'll put a full moon up here. So we've had a crescent moon and uh, we've had a star, Bethlehem, and a nice round white, white because by the time the winter comes, the harvest moon, which is yellowish where we are, has, tends to become more whitish a bit of a halo around it, which is kind of indicated by the way it sort of bleeds into the background a little bit. And then we will want some stars and some snow. So we'll pick up some of this nice white paint, which dries with a bit of a sheen. And we will spatter that all over. This one's going to have a bit more than the other two. It's a real wintry scene, and where it's wet, it'll turn into snowflakey type things. So. so there we are. That's that one. And so we've got all three done now, and hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, I'll, oops, and I'll let you go. And I'll see you again soon. So bye, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>